Hello, welcome again to the Marketing Study Guide. The purpose of this video is to explain what is a discount rate when we use it in a net present value calculation. Before I get into the formula and the discussion of the numbers, let's keep in mind that what we're trying to do with the discount rate is trying to calculate what it is, what the future money is, equal to in today's dollars. Okay, so we use Bringing back to today's money, it uses the term present value, so it feeds into a net present value formula. The discount rate is set by the company, and it's based on its usual financial return. So that if it, whatever it has, if it say it raises $100 million in, in capital from the stock market, and was to put that into the business, what return would it get from its normal business operations? So the discount rate should be set at that percentage. Uh, if you don't know it or the company hasn't really used it before, then a discount rate of 10% is commonly used. Okay, In some companies that you work for, they'll actually call it the hurdle rate because if you can exceed that hurdle with a, a marketing initiative or some other project, then we can approve. Okay, let's have a look at the numbers. For this example of what a, a discount rate is, I've used two different uh, campaigns from a marketing perspective. One where we're spending $5 million to reposition the firm or the brand, and we're generating an ongoing extra increase in revenue of $2 million per year. The second one is a new product development where it starts off slow, grows up to $4 million, and then it'll decline away as it becomes less uh, you know, less competitive. Now what we have is this series of numbers down here that we eventually use to calculate net present value, which is on another video. I just really want to concentrate on the discount rate concept in this video. As I said, if we didn't know what it is, what the investment hurdle rate is for a company, we use 10%. So we start simply at 1, okay, and that's in year 0, this is today. Next year, which is year one, uh, we're going to add 10%. So 1 times 10% goes to 1.1. And all of these numbers are simply multiplied by a further 10%. So we have a compounding type effect. So I've just called it a compounding discount rate because we're actually compounding it upwards. Okay, what we, what we use is number four, is we create DCF, which is discounted cash flows for these projected or forecast numbers. And the formula is pretty straightforward. What it's doing is it's taking this number here in this column, so it will take year one, $2 million, and it's dividing it by the uh, compounding discount rate to give you that number. Because this is adding 10% every year, as you can see, this number is staying flat at $2 million, but this number will decrease because the compounding discount rate is getting higher. So at this, at this point in year seven, uh, the compounding discount rate is almost two. So $2 million becomes pretty well close to, to $1 million. So why are we doing that? What is the purpose? How do we calculate these numbers? Why do they make sense? Okay, that's what I want to talk about now. To do that, I'm going to come across here. I've added um, a couple of extra columns that we don't need for the calculation, but they're very handy to explain what a discount rate is. And I've picked three random numbers. This is from year three, five, and 10. And this is the discounted cash flow rate that we actually use in our net present value formula. So as you can see, in year three, five, and 10, our marketing forecast says, hey, we will deliver back to the company an extra $2 million a year in profit. But in the calculation of calculating net present value, which the $7 million is, we're actually using these numbers, not $2 million. So what is the relationship between these? If I come across here again, this explains it hopefully quite well. 
I've taken each of those three numbers and I've added them to the top. And what I've done for each of those, I've added 10% each year. So I've started to compound them up. So this, another 10%, which is another 77,000, gets to that. Another 10%, which is about 85,000, gets to that. And as you can see, I'm just building in, compounding it up 10% per year. Now the reason I'm using 10% is that's what the company has decided is the most appropriate discount rate to use. That's what it normally makes on its, its business operations. So therefore, if the company today had 770000 and they reinvested that in the business, they bought machinery or expanded, whatever they normally do, okay, their normal business operations, then they know they make 10% on that every year. So 770000 invested in the business today would compound up and produce an additional profit in year 10 of $2 million. $1.2 million invested in the business today, compounded, reinvested in the business, by year 5 would, would be delivering at two million dollars to be a, so what's happening is it's thinking of it like you're putting money into a bank you're not putting it in a bank you're putting it into, into a business but i'm trying to get the the understanding we're putting it into a bank we make interest on it we reinvest the whole lot we make more interest we reinvest it and it snowballs and it compounds so the same thing's happening for our our, our cash flows in our business. So what's happening, we use this one here, $1.5 million invested today. We go forward to year three, that's the same as $2 million. So as you can see, there's a correct relationship between these three numbers here and the three numbers I've picked, and they all come back to $2 million. So I come back over here, what's happening over here is we're saying what is that money equivalent to today in today's money if we were to put it in the business and I've shown you on the side there that 770,000 put in the business today compounded and reinvested in the business operations for 10 years is the same as two million dollars in 10 years time because it will build to that so what this formula is doing is saying okay you're telling me we're going to have all these $2 million, but if we had the money available today, what is it worth in today's money or present value? And that's what it's doing. It's bringing it back to a starting point. Therefore, here is the sum of these cash flows, is $15 million, but brought back to today's value. Okay, and as you can see, is equivalent to 7.2 or 7.3 million dollars. Now, if we were to invest all of that money, this five million dollars into the business, okay, we would do better on this campaign.